Number 10 then from paper one of the 2017 UI Mask. Here we go. A bucket load of marks. Nine marks here compared to those little piddling three marks you were getting before. Area between two curves. You'd recognise it immediately. First five marks would be, what's the area between these two curves? Well, you can write with confidence A equals this time because if you do it properly, the answer will have to be positive. There'll be none of that business of ending up with a negative and then saying, oh, that, that means the area must be positive then. No, the way you work out areas in integration is you're actually working out the areas of little thin rectangles. Their width is just a little bit of X, that's the DX, and the height of that rectangle will be the Y coordinate of the top, take away the Y coordinate of the bottom. So the area of that rectangle is the difference in the Y coordinates multiplied by the width, which is a little bit of X. And that's what you do for the first couple of marks, as it turns out. What's the area of that little rectangle? Well, the Y coordinate of the top is X cubed minus 4X squared plus 3X plus 1. Just being careful about which one's which. In the question, they quite handily put the upper one higher than the lower one. Take away the Y coordinate of the bottom, which comes from the bottom curve, the lower curve. That's X squared minus 3X plus 1. And really that should be in another bracket. That first bracket was just an aesthetic bracket. That needed to be there because you're subtracting more than one part. Now that gives you the height of that bar and the width of it is DX. Now that DX is important because it's areas. Height times width. And you start shading it in at zero and you stop shading it in at two. So zero to two. There's actually two marks here. The first mark was for saying times DX and going from zero to two. The second mark is for properly doing upper minus lower. So really tidy it up. You could integrate it in this form. Just take all seven of those terms and integrate them up. But you'd be better off tidying it up first. So that altogether you've got X cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x and the ones disappear. Tidying it up unfortunately gets you no marks since it's really I suppose just a convenience for you but you should do that anyway. Now you can start to integrate and make sure you integrate, build it up, add one to the power. If you differentiate then the whole game's a bogey for marks after that. So integrate it. Up to 4, divide by 4. Up to 3, divide by 3. Up to 2, divide by 2. Now you can write 6 over 2, which you probably do, but I think it's better just to jump straight in with 3. That's what's to be, in, that's what's to be evaluated now. You can put in plus C if you like. The thing is, when you do the evaluation, it'll be something plus C. Take away something plus C, so the C's cancel anyway. So there's no need to put it in, and you're certainly not penalised for not putting it in, because really, there's, you don't need to. Evaluate it at 0 and 2. Now, doing that, integrating it. That's the third mark. There's only two marks left. One for the substitution and one for the calculation. Of course, that calculation is a big bogey, isn't it? Especially in number paper one where you can't use a calculator. Even the substitution sometimes creates a little bit of anxiety when it's a zero that's going in. Can you just put take away zero when you know it's coming to zero? And it looks as if you can according to the marking scheme. But is that going to be consistent for all marking schemes? The next step is put in the limits for just one mark. So it's really tedious, you just have to replace the X's with 2's first of all. So you just go through it putting in 2's. And then you think, now can I just put a bracket and put a 0? Marking scheme seems to be letting you do that. Sometimes you think, oh it's just safer, just in case, you never know who's going to make up next one. Maybe I should really put in zeros. Because there are cases, of course, when x equals zero doesn't mean the subtracting part zero, especially when there's brackets involved, functions of functions. For I know writing this down just looks silly, doesn't it? Because you know the whole thing's coming to zero. But anyway, doing that, substitution gives you a mark. Now the whole evaluation will at least know that part just comes to zero. So for this bit, I suppose there's some bits that cancel, but you're probably just going to think, oh, 16 over 4 is 4. 2 cubed is 8, 40. 40 upon 3, and 4 threes, that's 12. That doesn't get a mark, you're only going to get a mark for the final answer. 
So you've actually got 16 minus 40 upon 3. Maybe we'll just put it down. 16 minus 40 upon 3. Still no marks for that. Then you think I have to make them all thirds. 3 times 16 is 8. 48. Take away 40. 8 upon 3. Square units. Oops. That's the final mark. And in part B, determine the fraction of the shaded area which lies below this line that's now been added, the line y equals 1 minus x. Well, there's a couple of ways you could work out the area above the line, find the fraction and then take it away from 1, or find the area and take it away from the previous area and then find the fraction. But simply just to do what it says. What's the area that lies beneath the line? So, again it goes from 0 to 2 still. And since you're working at the area beneath the line, these are the little rectangles you're adding up. Y2 minus Y1, upper Y minus lower Y. So it's going to be the upper one is 1 minus X. And the lower one is going to be the parabola, which is X squared minus 3X plus 1. That's what's going to get multiplied by DX. Doing that gets a mark. Now, tidy up, you could do it the way it is just now, but you'd be better off tidying that up. So it's going from 0 to 2 of, which is again 1, take away 1, they disappear. Unfortunately, you've got a negative x squared, if I just put them in order. But you've got a negative x plus a 3x plus 2x. Then, now integrate it. So it'll be negative x cubed upon 3, I'll put negative third of x cubed, plus up to 2, divide by 2, so that's just one of them, from 0 to 2. Or you could have written x squared minus a third of x cubed. Right, substitute. Well, of course, that would be the second mark. Now, you'd normally think, well, there'll be a mark for substitute, a mark for evaluate, but then there's still something else to do, finding fractions, and you've only got two marks left. So the next part, because it's simple and you've already done it in part A, is you're only getting the next mark once you've done the substitution and the evaluation. So it's negative a third of 2 cubed, plus 2 squared, minus, I'll just be brave this time and put minus 0 since it only given me the one mark. So that's the way it is in the marking scheme anyway. I'd have put the proper substitution in if it was just on its own, just for safety. So that's negative 8 upon 3, plus 4, minus 0. So that's 12, take away 8, is 4 upon 3. That gets a mark. That's the area between the line and the lower curve. So the last mark is, so what is this fraction then? What fraction of the area is beneath? Well, the area that's beneath is 4 thirds. Out of the total, which was 8 thirds, multiplying them both by 3, 4 over 8, cancelling it down, that's a half. There's the final mark.